How was it? The ending of your book. Still need to digest it, huh? Um, do you mind if I sit with you? I just want some company. And we are the only ones in this wagon. It feels kinda lonely sitting by myself when there's another person almost next to me. Only if I'm not intruding or anything, of course. Thank you very much. What was it about then? The book. Hmm. Mm -hmm. A heavy read, huh? Those close to the last stories often end in an unsatisfying way. At least in my experience. Just leaving you there, trying to bundle up all the loose threads at the end. They tied up everything too neatly. Hmm. What's there to digest then? Oh, it is because of that. Not because of the story or the ending itself, but due to how it ended. I get it now. Real life kind of doesn't work like that, does it? A shame, really. So... Where are you headed? Family, huh? Same with me. Can't really say I'm looking forward to it, but I kinda need to check in once in a while. Let them know I'm still alive and kicking. <laughs> well, that's not entirely fair. I... anticipate it, I guess. But I'm also glad when it's over, and I could be me again, you know? No, I'm not particularly drilled. I mean, I love them and all, but it's... Well, it's complicated. My family isn't complicated, am I right? <laughs> it always turns out nice, though. In hindsight, at least. My mom cooks the best food. Way too much, of course. That's how she is. Overbearingly caring at all times. Willing to fix things with food, as always. My dad is a voice of a straightforward topic, one that I'll not get too deeply into here. He means well, though, in his own right. We always do stuff together, the three of us, when I am home. Hiking, board games, movies. One time we went fishing. Can't get more stereotypical than that, huh? We all hated it. <laughs> but in a communal sort of way, just complaining and grumbling the entire way through. My siblings were also along for that ride. I <laughs> swim around her. There's nothing better than joint suffering. <laughs> These days, we barely meet, though, unfortunately. They work overseas, you know. I work here, so winding up our schedules can be a challenge. <sighs> I miss the simpler times, when it was just us. Playing games, climbing trees, getting into trouble. But time moves on for all of us. Um, yes, we still have contact. I could always text him or call them over the internet, but... Okay, this may sound very strange with all those marvels of technology at my disposal. Hmm, how shall I put this? It sort of feels like they are not there. You know what I mean? They still exist, and I think of them once in a while, but they do not really occupy a space. In my life, I mean. When you live together, sharing such a space, they are a constant in your life. But these days, holding contact with them seems so complicated. Daunting, even. Huh. I guess I took our time together for granted. The bonds we shared. Or maybe just the part we're talking to them was more direct. We didn't always use our words either. I mean, they were quite the rascals, you know. Siblings and all. And I certainly wasn't better, that's for sure. But those days are over now. For good.
Yeah, I guess we never truly appreciate what we have in the moment until it is gone. I still like to think that I put an effort to hold contacts nowadays. Occasionally chatting with them, sharing memes, or hearing the latest tirades about work and such. That is still an effort though, in every sense of the word. Unlike when we come together in person, where things seem less... complicated. Sure, they have made some new experiences, you know, in their own lives apart from me. It's soft and simple things, a new phrase, or maybe a different hairstyle, their clothing. But underneath all of that, they are still... well, them. And we hug, we laugh, we banter and talk, just as we used to. No complications, no oceans between us. Just us. Kind of young again. Yet not. And still... I guess that's true. You can almost call it a time capsule of a shared past. Having something like that is invaluable. A little dread of one's own former self to hold on to. Honestly, it's times like these, reminiscing, where I'd like to just squeeze them. You ever get that certain urge when thinking about someone? Being an only child makes it hard to relate, huh? But at least you had some great friends, in. Eh? <laughs> oh, my siblings were not perfect, that's for sure. We did some petty things to each other, but loved them nonetheless. Always will. Hmm, love. What a strange word. So much packed into so little. I often wonder, is it really them that I love, or their past that come to the surface again when we meet? Is it that nostalgic image of ourselves that I hold dear? Perhaps not them really, but the relationship itself we had. Or is it the relationship that we share nowadays? That can't be right. I still value them as people. I'm also immensely proud of what they have achieved in their lives, that's for sure. None of them are rock stars, famous, or rich. But I've seen them struggle and get so far. It just makes me beaming. Well, proud. Maybe it's just the simple aspect that I love. What they give me. Something to be proud of. Do I love them to the core or only for their surface elements? Ugh, why is this stuff so complicated? I guess that's why you're not so happy with the ending of your book. And I guess if life was simple, all neatly bundled up, it would lose a lot of its appeal. True, some things could stand to be a bit simpler. <laughs> or some ones. Parents, huh? It seems it's always the same story, but I guess it's not that easy for them either. Sure, I can elaborate. Hmm. I mean, Daisy has changed so much, and yet we as kids often don't realize that they change too. We simply lack the, well, everything to recognize that. That isn't a bad thing, mind you. That's not at all what I'm trying to say here. What I am trying to say is that as children we often measure our growth in getting tall and strong, but our parents do not grow in such a way. Well, sometimes they gain strength, often in ways we can't really see when we are younger. But as I said, our measure of progress is a bit of a different one when young. The cliched point is that they are people in and of themselves as well, and as children we often see them in their role primarily. Being that role or simply themselves cannot be easy, I think. Oh, um, sorry. I didn't want to be presumptuous. Who do you visit then, if you don't mind me asking? Grandparents. You grow up under their care then, huh? Hmm. I didn't know that your relationship to your biological parents was that 
strained. That thought hadn't even crossed my mind. I hope it didn't come across as insensitive. I guess it was kind of ignorant to assume that my experience of family was the norm. And that's good to know. Coming to terms with such an unfortunate situation is often all we can do. Kind of making an ending that suits us. Or one we can live with, rather. When these shreds are not coming together neatly, we have to do the work ourselves and tie them up. Hmm. So your grandparents were good to you then? And that's good. That you had something like that in your life. At least an actual family. Hmm. And we'll be honest here, me and my parents don't have the best relationship. Not like you and your biologicals, heaven forbid, but not as sweet as with your grandparents either. Sure, we get together, do stuff, talk, but there is always this thick atmosphere. Something none of us want to talk about, as thick as the figurative elephant. Oh, it's not on them, I think. I'm usually very tense at these little get-togethers in ways that I'm usually not. Around other people, I mean. Um, here's the thing. Whilst all my siblings have accomplished something, I myself am simply living my life. Unfortunately, that's the elephant, if you get what I mean. And it's not like my mom and dad want me to be like my siblings, successful in their own right, but often missing at family events due to simple circumstances. Like, they kind of want both. Something to show, something that gives them the feeling of security for their children, their future. They'd also still have us in their life. Hmm, I guess we all hang on to the simpler days, not that I think about it that way. But, in the end, all they want for us is to be happy, I guess. Well, their version of happy, but happy nonetheless. I guess what I'm trying to say is that happiness is not that universal a word, you know? It sort of depends on your experiences. I am happy where I am today, and I'd probably advise others to follow in my footsteps. But what if the world of tomorrow looks different, yet I am still as I am now, still hanging on to my past? Such advice might ring hollow to others who have not experienced life as I did. Or maybe I'm just overthinking it. <laughs> It is actually nice talking to someone about those feelings. Well, thanks. I didn't expect that. I thought my rambling might have gotten annoying by now. But I don't think that my perspective is that unique in this regard, though. But then again, I don't really talk to others about these things. Family things. Introspective things, you know. Most of the time, I just throw out platitudes. The holidays were nice. The dinner was great. It was nice seeing mom and dad again, and my siblings too. The usual. But the truth be told, nothing ever ties up so neatly, does it? It is nice to talk out the whole messiness of it, verbalize my thoughts and have someone not judge, and provide a new perspective. What do you think that is? Hmm, I think it's a bit more than that. Maybe it's that we come at a stranger as we are now. No history, no knowledge of each other's past. Not much to overthink. They can accept us as is, we'll leave. No future, mutual history. Not much past to put things in the context with. We simply are as we are now, or how we like to be. Yes, and with our loved ones it is different. We are still us in the present, yet also everything that we have been. With them, to them, apart from them. They might have past versions of us that they might prefer, and sometimes they push us to be that. True, that can be for better or for worse, but strangers have to take us at face value. 
Hmm. I actually never thought about it that way. Hmm. It is kind of weird, though. Usually people say something along the lines of, you'll never meet them again in your entire life. And maybe that plays into it, but that is not quite my style, I guess. Like, I hope that I had a positive impact on their lives, precisely because we'll never see each other again. I often think about that after meeting someone else. <laughs> or overthink about it, yes. That's a really interesting point. Hmm. I never thought about it that way. When we're around our family, our guard is up, that's true. But we don't really have a well-tailored armor against strangers. Just a shield that we might raise and hope for the best. We might be onto something here. It's like when we strain our skin, be it from walking a lot or lifting weights or cutting or work, those parts grow tougher. They grow calloused. If we strain against our family or friends, the same thing happens. So when we come together, those calluses are still there, like you said, an armor. One which we know how to use, be it instinctively or consciously. The same way we brace when jumping into ice cold water. If we know how frigid it is, then we are prepared. But simply jumping into the unknown can have one tense up still. Be it the right way or the wrong one, only hindsight can tell that. But one still does. Hmm. But maybe I simplified it too much. I had plenty of instances where I stayed in a bad situation in spite of knowing better. But I think your point still stands. I guess that's the issues with analogies, huh? They still make you think, though. I'm better now. Thanks for asking. I also learned how to put a bow on it, so to speak. Leave it behind, despite the scars it left. Like you with your biological parents. Hey, um... I'd really like to chat some more with you, but my stop is coming up. It was nice talking to you. Thanks for indulging me. You certainly had a positive impact on me and gave me lots to think about. Just wanted to let you know. Thanks. You too. Oh, shoot. I'm Jonas, by the way. But my friends usually call me Joe. Nice to meet you. Does that mean we're no longer strangers then? Hmm? Your number? Oh, one second, I need to write it down. My phone died, unfortunately. Actually, I write your name down as well. Just so I don't forget. That's your mumble number then. Got it. Guess that makes us not quite strangers anymore, huh? <laughs> Feels nice. Anyways, I need the bell. Whether or not our story resolves neatly here, we'll for meet again. I know that I'll cherish a little talk we had here for a long, long time. Take care.